Eh, para los que no conocen a Douglas, es un personaje bueno, que acompaña la media party o acompaña a Hacks Hackers Buenos Aires desde hace muchos años. De hecho, bueno, eh, tiene mucho que ver con, con, con la media party. Y bueno, Douglas vino a todas las media parties, que no es joda. Y... Aplaudan, aplaudan. Eh, Source Fabric es una empresa bastante interesante. Desarrollan software para medios. Eh, el software que es, y es interesante, el software que desarrollan es software libre, pero tienen clientes comerciales. O sea, es un, es un lindo juego, digamos. No es, que, no es que, bueno, hacen cosas y después, eh, bueno, quizás alguien las hace, quizás alguien las use, quizás no. O sea, tiene, es una empresa que tiene dos partes. Y cuando uno, bueno, piensa software para medios, por ahí lo más fácil, por lo menos para mí, es pensar, bueno, hacen un CMS. Pero bueno, no, no solamente hacen un CMS. Eh, tienen eh, para lo que sería un CMS, que es como bueno, para un medio más tradicional o un medio impreso, pero en, en internet. Pero también hacen software para radios y hacen software para cubrir eventos eh, tipo live blogging. So, entonces, es, un, es una empresa que es, <coughs> es interesante porque hacen software, es un software que está probado, es un software que es software libre. Entonces, eh, si ustedes están empezando algo nuevo, es interesante eh, mirar lo que ellos hacen porque eh, o pueden hacerlo con ellos o pueden agarrar y modificar y customizar como ustedes necesiten. Pero es software que también está probado, digamos, no es que van a empezar un medio nuevo desde un WordPress, sino que empiezan un medio nuevo con un software que está usando otro medio. Entonces, eh, o que están usando otros medios y que hay soporte y que hay, bueno, eh, mucha experiencia puesta ahí. Así que los dejo con Douglas y Source Fabric. Esto lo voy a mirar. I think I'm just going to stand here behind the, the podium for a couple of different reasons, but how are you all doing? Hello! Uh, man, uh, I am so glad to be back here um, in Buenos Aires. I feel like I'm almost porteño, and uh, I feel it's almost, you know, because of like, how much asado I've had for the next the last few days, but um, as uh, As you heard, this is my fourth uh, media party. I've been here for four times. That's me there last year. Um, and the, this event uh, for me is really one of the highlights of my year. I do a fair amount of uh, speaking at various events worldwide. But one of the things that I really appreciate about this one is how much uh, people are not just sitting back and consuming, but rather that everybody is participating and that everybody has something to contribute. And I think that this makes this event remarkable. I think you guys deserve a round of applause. See, it's still too early in the morning for everybody to clap, so I understand. Anyway, uh, my name is Douglas Arellanes, and I come from Prague in the Czech Republic. Hacks Hackers Prague represent. Um, now, uh, I wanted to explain a little bit about what we are doing at Source Fabric, and one of the best ways to do that is to explain something actually that's very important, which is this. I believe in us, that you guys are part of a, a wonderful community here, both in Buenos Aires and in Latin America, and the people who are coming internationally. We're all working on this issue of reinventing journalism. We're all coming at it from different sides, and everybody has something important to contribute there. And this, I think, is one of the things that is going to save journalism. The fact that we, together, are all going to contribute. One, of, one maybe one tiny little piece of the, of the solution, but we will contribute it together. In this way, uh, this is something that goes to a lot of the core of what we do at Source Fabric. I wanted to introduce you to my team. This is my team uh, from, uh, from all over the world. We are a team of now around 70 people, uh, mostly software developers, and we make the tools that make the news. We are a nonprofit institute, and this is also something that makes us a little bit unique in the world of both technology and open source. We are a nonprofit institute in the same way that Apache is nonprofit. Um, this is our mission. We provide media organizations with the software, expertise, and support to produce quality journalism online, on print, and on air. Um, we're headquartered in Prague, in the Czech Republic, and we have offices in Berlin, Toronto, Cluj, Romania, and Belgrade. Um, our motto 
is find a way or make one. And I will give extra history points to whoever uh, can actually find who that quote was from. Yeah, it's too early in the morning, but I'll explain. Um, the, uh, the general, uh, Hannibal, when he was trying to figure out how to invade Italy, tells his generals, uh, come up with a cr crazy idea to, uh, to invade Italy. And they're like, I don't know, how about uh, elephants crossing the Alps? And Hannibal's like, yeah, all right. But basically what he told his, his team was, find a way or make one. And that for us is what we do as well. Now, what we do is that we share know-how and technology across media organizations. Sometimes the media organizations are big. Uh, they're big, established, commercial news organizations. And sometimes they're very small. Um, maybe they're the only uh, source of independent news in Yemen, for example. Um, maybe they're covering the earthquake in Nepal. And our whole point is that through sharing technology and through sharing know-how, everybody benefits. Here's a, some of the organizations that we're working with these days. Uh, one of the big ones that we've been working with for the past, oh, two years or so is the Australian Associated Press, and that's the national news agency in Australia, and they've been working with us on a, a radical new tool that I'll talk about uh, both here and in a workshop later this afternoon. Um, in Latin America, we're working with Brazil 247 uh, out of Sao Paulo and El Faro uh, out of El Salvador. Um, but what we're, we're doing as well here is that we're creating networks of know-how and networks of technology so that uh, when one of these organizations makes an improvement to the technology, the other organizations who are in the community can also benefit. That's open source. That's how it works. Um, a long list of organizations that we work with. Uh, this year, uh, we've been working with Amnesty International on uh, creating their annual report using our book, uh, our electronic book uh, software. Uh, we've been working, as I mentioned, with the Associated, the Australian Associated Press, uh, Die Zeit, in, uh, in Berlin uh, for live blogging. Um, and we've been doing a lot of uh, work that's been funded by donors in some very difficult parts of the world, including uh, the South Caucasus. Uh, Azerbaijan, for example, is one of the most difficult places in the world for a journalist to actually operate. And we've been there for the past two years. Um, it wouldn't be media party if I didn't get to come here and bring some stuff. And yesterday I met somebody and they're like, so it was at the, the media fair. And somebody says, so what exactly do you do? And I was like, well, um, here's a way to think about it. If you're James Bond, I'm Q. So, so I come up and I give you the, uh, the exploding pen or the, the, the cool Aston Martin or whatever, right? So here's what's coming from my lab right now. This is what we've got for 2015. One of the biggest initiatives that we have been working on, we've been working on this for more than five years, um, a team of 27 uh, developers, um, including eight developers from the Australian Associated Press. The thing is called Superdesk, and what it is is a newsroom management platform. It's not a content management system. It's a newsroom management platform. It manages the ingest, the story assignment process, authoring, versioning, media archive, uh, editorial collaboration, packaging, and then outputs to an API. And then you can take that output and connect it up to your CMS to feed your website. Or you can connect it up to a print uh, output uh, for, for further work on print. Um, Superdesk uh, is being tested right now at the Australian Associated Press. It'll be deployed this fall. Um, and it's a pretty remarkable platform for many different reasons. Uh, one of the reasons I think that it's is really nicest about it is that because we've been working for the past two years with the Australian Associated Press in their offices in Sydney, they have been giving us constant feedback about how the tool should work, what it needs to do, and how we can actually improve it and make it work faster. Um, so Superdesk uh, is, is a wonderful, wonderful tool. Um, and like I say, we'll be talking about that a little bit later uh, today. But here's what's also important about Superdesk. It's up on GitHub right now. If you've got your chops, if you, you, you're good with Python and Angular, it's up there. Um, you can take this right now and start working with us uh, on 
improving it and start work, uh, working with us to make the, the platform more adaptable. Um, another thing that we've been working on recently is uh, you know, trying to make long form easier for journalists. One of the things that everybody's, you know, everybody loves uh, Snowfall or other uh, big prestigious uh, projects, but those things are a pain in the ass to make. And so what we did uh, this year was to create a whole theme and a framework within our web CMS, New Scoop, to make it easier to actually uh, uh, produce long form video. And let me see if I can actually get this to work just as, you know, live demos are always fun at these things, right? So um, I'm just gonna let those three dots go for a little while. Um, what's interesting about this as well is that uh, it actually makes it a lot easier for uh, a journalist in the field to gather up the video and to gather up the audio and, and uh, uh, photos and whatnot, but then to bring them back and put it into a, a story format that is much more uh, uh, impactful than simply uh, presenting the video in that little box on, on your CMS. So this is a theme uh, for our new Scoop CMS. Let me actually just scroll through a couple of these things. Uh, this is actually a very nice documentary. It's one of the, the tests that we did uh, where a documentary journalist uh, went to the Congo to study um, the, the impacts of microcredit. Um, but you can see that this video, if it was this small, it would never be as, as impactful. But now with this type of thing, it's, it's a, lot more, uh, a lot more useful um, in this context. So uh, this is a, a theme that we've made called Storyteller, um, and it's, uh, it's available on our site. Let me get back to our presentation now, let me see here. Okay, thanks. So, um, oh, yeah, not that one. Sunlight's awesome too, though. Um, so, uh, so that was, you know, that's one of the things that we're working on. So sometimes the things that we're working on are really big, really heavy infrastructure, right? Or sometimes they're smaller things, like making it easier to tell a single story or to, uh, to create a package. Another thing that we've been working on uh, this year that's a lot of fun um, is a, a radical concept for radio. Now, a couple of years ago, I think it was maybe three years ago, I got up on this stage and I demoed for you a piece of software that we have called Airtime. And Airtime is a tool for making radio in the cloud. And you don't need any streaming servers or any infrastructure locally. We take care of that for you up in the cloud. What we did this year was we started a project in the South Caucasus called Microwave FM. And the concept behind Microwave FM is kind of simple. There are, you know, it's one thing to have a radio station that has thousands and thousands of, of listeners, but what if we had a radio station that only had 50 listeners? But those 50 listeners were people that, were, that felt really passionately about something. Maybe, for example, they were into something rather random. Uh, we found out, for example, that uh, the country of Georgia, not Ray Charles, Georgia, but Joseph Stalin, Georgia, uh, the country of Georgia has a pretty thriving reggae scene. Who, f who knew? Uh, so we, what we did was we found these, these people who were involved in the Georgian reggae scene and we gave them a radio station. And so they were able to create a small radio station that serves that community and serves it very well. And the point is for the, the, the area of the South Caucasus that these are countries that in many cases are actually still at war. And so when we are able to find points of commonality, maybe through something as banal as a style of music, people are, they have something more in common. So maybe you live in Azerbaijan and you're into death metal. Rock on. That's, the, that's what I'm talking about. But maybe you have something more in common with somebody who is into death metal over the border in Armenia, and those two countries are at war. And maybe if you start to talk and share, you know, share music or share interests, with those people over the border, maybe then the dialogue can start a little better. This is what we're trying to kickstart with this project called Microwave FM, which is powered by our airtime software. So this is a, a really nifty project, um, and it also points to something that I think is, is happening uh, in, a, in a very rapid way. Uh, the rise of smartphones and the rise of cheap data on mobile is making it possible to do a lot of really interesting things with radio. This is one of, one of the reasons why we've seen podcasting take off as much as we have, but we're also starting to see other hybrid forms. Maybe a radio station that only exists online. 
Maybe it's a radio station that is a combination, an aggregation of other radios that can only do two or three hours a day. But this is the type of stuff that we're able to help to facilitate because for one thing, it doesn't cost a whole bunch of money to do, it's free, right? Or in this case, if you hire us to run your servers, then you know, 20, 25 bucks a month or whatever. So, but it's not a lot of money and you don't have to sell your house to do it. And so in this way, what we're trying to do is to lower the cost of innovation. Another tool that we've, uh, we've been working on quite a bit this year is a thing called BookType, uh, which is a platform for making collaborative eBooks, meaning that if you want to make an instant book, you can get a bunch of people together and give each of them a chapter. And so maybe all you have to do is write one chapter of the book, but somebody over there on the other side of the newsroom is working on another chapter. But you can produce an entire book within a few days. And so this platform helps to make that happen. Um, one of the, the things that we're proudest of with this was that we were able, we're working with Amnesty International this year uh, to produce their annual report. 480 pages, something like 20 languages, God knows how many hundred contributors. But they were spanned all over the world, but they were able to come in together on this platform, collaborate, and to produce that annual report in a beautiful way and to do so on time. Some of the things that we're working on right now, um, I mentioned Superdesk. Superdesk is, uh, it's up on GitHub right now, but we will have a formal release probably in the next few weeks. Um, there are, uh, what's interesting about Superdesk in a couple of ways is that you're able to actually build new applications on top of it. So uh, we do have, uh, as you guys heard at the beginning, we have a live blogging platform. Um, you guys have heard of things like Scribble Live or uh, Cover It Live and things like that. Well, we have one that's free and open source. You guys can actually install a live blog today and not have to pay those big guys a lot of money for it. Um, the new one that we're working on, Live Blog 3.0, is completely built on top of Superdesk so that the live blogging team can actually integrate with the rest of the newsroom. Um, another thing that I think is, uh, is gonna be fun, and uh, I will talk about it later this afternoon, is a project that we're working on, that my team is working on for image authentication or image verification, uh, but automated. How can we better automate uh, the task of checking an image coming in? Um, this afternoon, we're gonna talk about images and how we can make images lie and how we can also spot hoaxes on the internet. Um, so that will be one of the, the, uh, the two um, workshops that I have for today. Um, we're also working on a couple of different things relating to Superdesk for uh, other platforms, ties between the Superdesk platform and your existing CMS. So you can write your content, you can have your newsroom on Superdesk, but then connect it up to your WordPress website or your Drupal website or anything else that you've been invested in so much. Um, or if you want something more modern, we're also working on web publishing. Uh, right now for that. Um, so those two, uh, those two workshops that I have today, uh, three o'clock, introducing Superdesk, uh, five o'clock, image verification, and I'm really glad to see everybody here, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you again and to taking part in all of the fun that is the media party. This is our website, sourcefabric.org. Come and check it out, come and talk to me. I'm really glad to see you. Thank you.